Good afternoon, everybody. It is Dr. K here from the I Institute, and we are just in OR2 uh, at the I Institute. And what I wanted to do today was go over cervical instruments, the instruments that we use during cataract surgery, really highlighting exactly what they are and what they look like. And the reason I'm doing that is because I posted a few days ago about how I had a surgery case where the lens didn't go in exactly as it should have. And then I was asking for an instrument and the person uh, that I was working with wasn't exactly sure which instrument that was. And so rather than get, you know, overly frustrated in that situation, I decided to take that and make a video out of it so that everybody who might want to know what these instruments are can watch a video and see. It doesn't matter if it's here or in some other state or around the world or, or whatever. These are, are the cataract surgery instruments that you might find on a cataract surgery tray and this is what they look like. Okay, so cataract surgery. First thing we do is we make a side port incision. And this is pretty universal, but you know, there's gonna be slight variations depending on the surgeon. Uh, the blade we use for that happens to be this one. It's a one millimeter side port blade. This one happen, happens to be yellow. It is kind of my favorite side port blade, although sometimes you'd be used at times. So side port blade. Then we'll use some gel, some viscoelastic material that comes in an injector. And so uh, that one happens to be yellow too, and we inject uh, that gel. Then the very next thing we do is we use this, um, what we call a stabilization ring or, or a Thornton stabilization ring. It looks like this. I'm going to zoom in here for you. We will see. So there is the stabilization ring, and it's got kind of teeth on it. It doesn't really hurt because the eye is numb, but this stabilization ring holds the eye in place while we make our next incision. And the incision we make here is with a, a main keratome blade. And this one's three millimeters. We usually use one that is about half a millimeter or more smaller than that. So the incision sizes are about a millimeter and about two and a half millimeters, give or take. And so we use that main incision. And then once we do that, the very next instrument we use is called the utrata and I'll get that out here for you. Here it is, okay. All right, we'll zoom in. So it looks like tweezers, uh, if you can see that. It looks like tweezers, but when you zoom in, I'm gonna try to look upside down there, but we'll focus on the, see it's got two, it looks like tweezers, but there are two pointy ends on it. Let me see if I hold it differently if you can see it better. I think that is, there we go. Two pointy ends on that. You try to, the reason for the pointy ends are, are because this has to grasp the capsule as we do our capsular exus. And so, looks like a tweezer, okay? But it's got pointy ends on it. And so we do our capsular exus. Then the very next thing we use is we inject uh, some BSS on a cannula. Let me see if I have one. I didn't take one of those out. Cannula looks something like this. You'll have a BSS in a syringe. Uh, this is a 3ml syringe, so this is what we've used. And then on the end, it's a little tube, like a needle, but blunt, okay? And we use that and we inject BSS and we kind of rotate uh, the lens into pieces. Then once we've done that, we use our FACO handpiece, which is that kind of a big instrument. And what we do with that is we start to break up the lens. And then the very next thing we'll use after that is what we call a second instrument. And this is where you can have some variability, but this is a second instrument, okay? And let's zoom in on it here. And there we go. It's got a little end on it, kind of like a hook. And the very tip can vary depending on the surgeon and what their preference is, but that hook has a little ball in this case, and this is kind of um, the second instrument that I like to use. Okay, but that's what this is called. This is called a second instrument. Why do you, they call it that? Really, because you use it in your second hand. Your primary hand has the main uh, hand piece that removes the cataract. This is used to kind of break up the cataract, okay? And then once that cataract is broken up and removed, then we use a, a little slightly little different irrigation aspiration hand piece that I don't have um, out here today. And we clean up all the cortex and then we put our lens in and when we put our lens in, we use what they call a Sinsky hook. So a Sinsky hook looks like this, and it really looks like the second instrument, but the key is the tip is different. So this Sinsky hook, first of all, it's totally straight. There's no elbow bend to it at all. 
And then also the tip is shorter and probably just as blunt. And so this is called a Sinski. And it's really important to know the differences because even though the instruments look really similar, they don't work exactly the same in the eye. And so if I want a second instrument, I want a second instrument. If I want a Sinski hook, I really need a Sinski hook. And so it's important to be able to recognize the differences. Some other things we might use are uh, 0.12 forceps. Those are really common. So these are forceps, as you imagine, but 0.12 size has to do with how big the teeth are on the end. And these are so small that it's hard to even see the teeth, but they are there and they grasp the eye and hold it in position, okay? And another thing that you will see is this is our lid holder, okay? And so this one is, is kind of adjustable and it just holds the eye open just like that. It doesn't put too much tension on the lids, okay? It's uh, called a Lieberman speculum. And I don't know, this is a Lieberman design. I don't know if this one's exactly a Lieberman speculum, but uh, the Lieberman is the one that twists open and just stays and you can't really squeeze against it. The wire, a different type of wire speculum is one that doesn't have this little twisty open. You just squeeze it closed and, and it springs back open. Okay, then other two instruments we have here are tires. We don't use these a lot in cataract surgery, um, but they are two different instruments. There's a straight tire and a curved tire or a McPherson, sometimes we call that. Everybody's got their own instrument these days. And so whether this is exactly a McPherson is probably up for debate, um, but there you go. And so that's what these look like. They're flat on the ends and we use them for tying stitches. And we don't use them a lot because we don't use a lot of cat stitches in cataract surgery, but that's what they look like. We use them to tie sutures. Okay, so you've got your Sinski hook. You've got your second instrument. Uh, you've got the Utrata forceps with the little sharp ends used to see puncture the capsule. Okay, you've got um, your stabilization ring, Thornton stabilization ring. You've got your two sets of tires, straight and angled. You've got your 0.12 forceps with the teeth. And you can see how this gets difficult, right? Because they look similar, but they're different. And in reality, the sizes are different. So this one's the tire, this one's the 0.12 forceps. And although the tips themselves may look very similar, the actual instrument is, is different in, in shape and size. Uh, and the only way you're gonna know that is you can by, by becoming familiar with the tray that you're working with. But when you know, the doctor asks for one of these, you should know where it is on your tray and you should just be able to grab it. And you should be able to recognize it, if not by the tip, because it's real small, just by the size of the instrument and where you put it down on the tray so you know where it always is. We've got, all oh, these are some drape scissors, or I guess I don't know the technical name for these, but we use these to kind of open the drape and these are just real fine scissors. And then we've got some irrigating cannulas here like this and so, these are used to kind of squirt saline onto the eye. All right, so that is a very brief overview of the instruments uh, that we use here at the Eye Institute uh, during cataract surgery and how you might be able to identify them uh, when they're sitting on your tray, if you're working with um, your eye doctor who's doing cataract surgery or any of the eye surgeries, uh, whether it's glaucoma, um, there's a whole bunch of different instruments, but a lot of them are very, the same, very much the same and or at least it's consistent throughout so a sinski hook is a sinski hook and anytime your doctor asks for that that's what it's going to look like but a second instrument is going to look have that elbow bend in it and it looks really similar but obviously when they're right next to each other clearly one is bent and one isn't okay and again there's some variation to this but for the most part that's how it works I almost forgot I wanted to go over these scissors. Okay, so that's another thing. I wanted some scissors. 
And so when we are doing uh, eye surgery, uh, there's again, a lot of different types of scissors, but there, there's two main types uh, that we use during anterior second surgery. The first one is, is this, it's called a Westcott scissor. Okay, and uh, they can be sharp. The tips in these ones are, are kind of pointy tips, but that end there can also be more blunt. And it just depends on what you're cutting, okay? Now, I'm gonna show you a smaller type of scissor that's called a Van Ness scissor. And I bet you under the scope, it doesn't, under the uh, magnifier here, it doesn't look that much different, but when I show it to you, uh, the actual size of the instrument, it's, it's quite a bit different, okay? So these, these are angled Ben S, okay, now, size difference here. Clearly, the ones on the top are way bigger than the ones on the bottom, okay? The, not only the size of the instrument, but the size of the tips of the blade. This is a Ben S, so this is for really fine uh, cornea, or cornea or iris work. But under the, you know, it looks kind of similar under the, micro, under the magnifying glass. So these are Van S scissors. So Westcott, these are sharp Westcotts, meaning the tip here is pointy, as opposed to being blunt or more rounded. These are Van S. These happen to be angled. Let's see if you can see that, where it comes down, again, like an elbow almost, right there. But you can have ones that are straight too, that just come straight down. Okay, so I didn't want to forget the scissors. Sorry, I almost forgot that. I'll add that to the last video, and then we'll be done. Bye now.